Hi there, and welcome to this series of videos about the essential features of Canvas. Canvas is uh, a complex learning management system that you'll use to teach and facilitate your courses. And it has hundreds of features, but like other software you've used, it has hundreds of features like Microsoft Word or Microsoft Windows or even your browser. Most of the time you only use a small percentage of those features, and that's what these videos will focus on those essential features that you tend to need to learn and need to know how to use every time that you teach in Canvas. Okay, in this first video I'm going to walk you through the basics of the interface of Canvas, like this dashboard area, and we're going to go into one of our course spaces and change the settings to get it ready for building a course. Uh, but before I begin though, I did want to point out though that if you only watch this video or these series of videos, you're like, likely going to forget most everything that you see. The best uh, strategy is to occasionally pause the video after I show you how to do something and then you go and do it for yourself in your own Canvas space. That way as you follow along you'll remember it a lot better. Okay, And now is a good time to pause the video right now uh, actually. Um, you, to go to a different tab and open up your go into your Canvas site and you should see the dashboard as the front page of your Canvas site. It should look similar to this. Um, one other thing to point out before we begin is on the bottom right corner there should be a maximize button on this YouTube video. That way you can see some of the little details in this interface and sometimes the text uh, can be a little small, especially if you're watching this on a phone or a small screen. So again, now assuming that you're at your dashboard, that's explore the space. Your, your dashboard may look a little bit different from mine. Uh, when you first come to Canvas you may have some announcement boxes at the top which you can read through and you can click the X symbol to close them if you like. Uh, you're going to see in this middle main area called the dashboard some different colored boxes. These are sandbox spaces and course spaces uh, that have been uh, given to you. Sandboxes are basically empty Canvas course spaces that you can use for playing around and learning Canvas or to build a template version of your course uh, or a collaborative space with other instructors or, or so on. Uh, you'll see they have different colors. As I showed before, when I scroll down, sometimes you can have an image and even an animated GIF on these course spaces. You can also drag these around if you want to reorder them. And I'll show you how to hide them too, if you like, in just a minute. Um, these different colors are just sort of randomly assigned to your courses. You'll see this one is yellow, for example, but that's just to sort of visually distinguish these different spaces. Uh, just because a course is colored yellow for you does not mean it's yellow for your students or other people who have access to this course. It's again just sort of an individual thing. If you, for whatever reason, don't like that color, you can click on these three little dots and change it to a different color. Uh, you can also give this course space a, a separate nickname, although it doesn't really rename the actual course. It just gives it a little nickname. Um, two other areas of this dashboard area is on the right you'll see a, a sidebar with some useful information. Again, your sidebar likely looks very different from mine because you're in different courses than me and so on. There's usually three different areas uh, on this right sidebar. Mine only shows two. Usually at the top there'll be a to-do section that shows upcoming things that you need to do either as a student or as an instructor. To-do items for a student might be assignments that are uh, coming up, uh, deadlines. As an instructor uh, the to-do to list might show things you need to grade. And then this next section shows coming up, other upcoming deadlines for students or instructors. And at the bottom is recent feedback. If you're, Especially if you're a student, you may uh, see recent things that have been graded so you can look at the feedback that you got. And at the bottom is a button to view all your grades across your courses. On the left, though, is this what they call a global navigation menu. And let's walk through this uh, briefly before we dive into one of our course spaces and start getting it ready to build a course. Uh, at the top uh, is the account item. If I click on this, uh, you see it shows my picture. I'm going to show you how to add your own picture to your account too. There's different sections. Uh, this is where you can change different settings related to your account. The profile section, uh, general canvas settings, your notification preferences, files, and ePortfolios. Let's start with the profile. I'll go in here. Uh, and if you hover over this picture, yours will just show a generic icon. Uh, there'll be a pencil icon and this is where you can upload a picture of yourself. I'm going to click on that and I can upload a picture, choose a picture, say I want this different picture. Uh, I don't know why, but <laughs> then hit save and then it will upload that image and now my profile picture has been set. So now is a good time now to, to pause the video, go to click on account and go to profile and upload a picture of yourself or else uh, you can Google for 
generate avatar to find different places to generate an avatar image if for example you don't have a picture of yourself or you're just not comfortable with your own picture but i highly recommend you do this uh when you teach uh it'll help uh sort of humanize your course students can see you as a person not just some generic icon when you're sending out announcements or discussing things with them on discussion boards so again pause the video now and upload a picture of yourself here in the profile area uh, while you're doing that if you like you can also edit your profile by clicking this button and add a biography statement or other related links related to your profile. These other areas of the account settings, I'm not going to really go into much detail because most of the time you won't need to touch them. The notifications area, you'd only go there if you find that you're getting too many emails from Canvas. You can go there and change your notification preferences. Uh, the files area is a personal file space, but usually you use your course to keep your course files instead. Uh, there's other general settings for Canvas. Uh, Canvas does have a basic ePortfolio tool. Uh, this is meant uh, for students, but also teachers because you could use it as a portfolio. It's a little bit primitive, but it, it's a nice tool uh, where students can automatically add, uh, say, papers they've written in courses or other materials from different courses they've taken. And then you may see this badges area, which we'll get into later. That's a more advanced feature. So let's go back to the dashboard. Uh, that's uh, again to take us back to the front page area of our course, our Canvas site. And again, like I said before, you can rearrange them and eventually this is gonna get a little crowded. You may end up with a bunch of courses here. How do you filter this list? Because this is meant to really only show the active course spaces that you're working in, uh, such as courses you're actually teaching right now. To change which courses show or do not show on this dashboard, you can click on Courses, the next item in this global navigation menu. And that pops up that same short list of courses that are also on the dashboard, but at the very bottom, you can click on All Courses. And you'll see here that I'm in over 150 courses. It's getting kind of crazy. If all these showed up on, our da on my dashboard, it'd be completely unusable to me. Uh, so if I do want to hide or show uh, items on that dashboard, I can basically star them. So say I add a star here to this AFA course, and then I go back to the dashboard, and the AFA course should show right at the very top. And uh, oops, it looks like it ended up at the bottom this time. There it is. Um, the next item on this menu item, though, is the calendar. This is a great feature. Of Canvas it will show you all the deadlines and due dates for all the courses that you're in or the courses that you're teaching um, let me and as you can see here's the deadlines for this uh, one particular course that I'm facilitating it it's starred over here it's checked over here you can check which courses do you want to appear on the calendar if you're teaching a course you can actually drag uh, an item to change the due date too like if there's some event that happens that uh, causes you to have to change a due date. You can uh, progress to uh, uh, the next month or a previous month. You can change the view to a week or agenda view. Uh, I did want to point out too there is a, uh, a way that you can add just calendar events here too just like any other calendar tool you may be familiar with. And there is an advanced feature here too called an appointment group. You can use this calendar tool to schedule appointments for meetings with your students too but I won't get into that in this video. See the Canvas instructor guide if you want to learn more about that feature. Next is the inbox tool. This is essentially an email client built into Canvas. Uh, you'll see any messages you've received from Canvas here on this left list. You can filter this list by course with this little pop-up menu. Like if you only want to see messages from students from one particular course. Uh, you'll see this little pencil icon. That's how you can compose a new message say that I want to send an email out to students in a particular course I can select the course here and then next to the to field I can either type in emails or I can click this little uh, address book icon and have it uh, it'll display who do you want to send this message to like all in the course I can click that and then adds that to the to field and then there's a subject line and the body field I do recommend usually checking this checkbox here. It says send an individual message to each recipient. That way it'll look like your email message is going to that individual student and they can't reply all to the whole course or anything. And there are some buttons at the bottom for attaching a file or even attaching a multimedia comment that you can record right in your browser. And then hit send to send that out. Uh, as you uh, read through your emails, you can also delete them. Just like uh, any regular email client, you'll see these icons will 
uh, become enabled as you click on items like the trash can icon to delete things. Next on this global navigation menu is uh, a really cool feature in Canvas, probably my favorite feature in Canvas is called the Canvas Commons. This is essentially a big database or technically a learning object repository uh, where pe anyone using Canvas around the world can share things they've made in Canvas into this repository. They might share their whole course they've made or just a quiz they made or just a page they made or so on. Uh, you can search, for example, your course topic here to see what other people have shared who, teaching, who are teaching courses uh, related to your course. Say I, I search for writing. I can filter the search results to only show, for example, uh, higher education results. Uh, but that's go back to search here to clear that. And I want to show you this one thing. If you uncheck this green checkbox where it says show public resources, then you'll be able to see only resources that have been shared at your own school. And in particular here at Valencia, I wanted to scroll down here and show there's some sample template sort of starter kits that you can use to get off to a quick start in your course if you prefer. Like here's a, a sample course that has a weekly skeleton outline for you already laid out in your course with a syllabus template, a sample homepage, a sample orientation module, and so on. You, you would then check which course space or sandbox do you want to import this into or which multiple places you want to import it into and then import it. So that's just one option to get you quickly off to a, a quick start in Canvas. Uh, next on this menu is probably the most important item for you to uh, remember. If, if you forget everything else you watch in all these Canvas videos, just remember this one thing. It's the help button here. When you click on this or when your students click on this, there'll be numerous resources here to get help. A student can click on it and there's a link here to ask your instructor a question. They can click on that to quickly email them a question about their course. Uh, you can chat with Canvas support, call your IT support, search the Canvas guides. Again, since if you're taking this Canvas Essentials course, this is a useful resource right here to search the Canvas instructor guide, for example, to find answers to questions that perhaps are not in this video or in the course. Uh, there's also a Canvas status page if you're wondering uh, if there's some kind of network issue with Canvas. Um, more often than not, though, Canvas seems to always be running. If you have a problem accessing Canvas, more often than not, it's the network at your own school or your local network. And finally, let's go back to the dashboard and let's get started setting up our own course space to get it ready for building uh, our courses. Um, and that's, I'm going to walk you through in the next video how to get started adding content and modules into your course, but let's get it set up first uh, for the remainder of this video. Pick one of your sandbox spaces or course spaces to go into it. And now we see what a course space looks like, an empty course in this case. It also has three main areas. Uh, there's the middle area by default shows what they call the modules. And I'll explain what that means more in the next video, but this is the main area where you'll be building and structuring your course content. On the right sidebar are some important tools related to your course. There's this publish and unpublish. Once you get your course ready for your students, you can hit publish to so that students can actually access the course. Here at our school, uh, all courses will automatically be published uh, the night before a course starts. You'll see some other buttons here like importing from the comments like I just showed you before. Uh, and I'll show you in the next video too how to create a, a, a more uh, welcoming landing page or home page on your course if you prefer that and so on. On the left here is the course navigation menu not to be confused with the global navigation menu and that's what we're gonna work on now actually is we're gonna customize this menu so it only shows the things that we want students to see. A lot of these things most of the time you'll never need to use so it's better to just hide them from students like for example if you're not going to be using video conferences you can hide this conferences item. So how do you do that? Uh, you'll go to the course settings and the course settings, if you scroll down, they're always on the bottom left, the very bottom of this course navigation menu. So let's go there now to the course settings and uh, your settings will usually start here in the course details uh, section. And this is what I want to focus on the remainder of this video. Um, we want to double check some of these settings, maybe change some of these settings before we get started building the course. Let's just walk through these uh, uh, from the very top. Uh, first is an optional thing uh, that you may want to do is you can add uh, an image that will show up on the dashboard like I showed before. You can click choose image and 
upload a, a, a colorful image, for example, to sort of illustrate to students uh, to kind of I more uniquely identify it as your course. You may be able to edit the name and course code of your sandbox. And let's scroll down a little bit farther. There's one other thing you may need to check is this grading scheme. If you're in a sandbox, uh, you may need to change this because the default grading school, uh, the default grading scheme in Canvas, act, uh, in the sandboxes at least, actually does not match, match the grading scheme used at our school. So I'm, if, you, if this is unchecked, you can check it and then click View Grading Scheme. And for example, this has uh, A, A minus, B plus, and what those mean. Uh, and that's actually not the grading scheme used at our school. To change it to the uh, our school grading scheme, you can click Select Another Scheme. Then click Valencia Default, say use this grading standard, and then done. And now we've changed the grading scheme uh, in your sandbox to match the school grading scheme. If you're if you're in a real course space, like a CRN space and not a sandbox, probably the grading scheme is already set up correctly. Uh, next, there are some other options that usually you can skip. Uh, uh, a lot of times these options are already checked for you, but I did want to scroll down to the very bottom where it says more options. There's one other neat feature that I recommend you check out. Uh, it's uh, where it says show recent announcements on the course homepage. I usually recommend checking this option because uh, as we'll, sh we'll see in a later video how to post announcements in Canvas, uh, sometimes students may not check their email very often or they may not remember to click on announcements to see the announcements you've posted. This option will show the, the, the most recent announcements at the very top of your course homepage, which is just another redundant way to get their attention for important announcements. Canvas recently changed how they display that, so I recommend just setting it to one. Show the most recent one announcement in your course. Review these other options if you need to change them, but then you can make sure you click this blue button, Update Course deal Details at the bottom to save your changes. Uh, Next, I, before I get to changing the course navigation menu, I just wanted to show one other thing to check out, the feature options. Uh, in case you see this new gradebook option here and under feature options, Canvas is working on a new gradebook, which will shortly become the, the default gradebook. So if you see this option under feature options, I recommend you go ahead and turn it on because it will be the new gradebook uh, by default soon. So it's better to go ahead and check it now so you can get used to using it. And before, again, before I get to the course navigation menu, uh, one other thing to explain are these different links on the right. I'll describe some of these more in later videos, like the student view. That's how you can switch to see how your course looks like from the student perspective. There's the import course content. That's how you might, for example, import course content from a Blackboard course or do a, a copy a Canvas course uh, from one space to another. You can export your course content to a file. And once you're done working on your course or near done, uh, this validate links and content tool is very useful. It will check your whole course to see if there's any broken links or links that go to a different course or images that are broken and so on. So finally, let's look at this navigation tab at the top. This is where the course navigation menu is set. The, at the top are listed the enabled course menu items. At the bottom are disabled items. And then you'll see a save button at the very bottom. So go ahead and drag some of these items down to the bottom, or you can click the three dots and say disable. And I, the one, the main ones I would uh, keep enabled are home, announcements, grades, people, syllabus. You can also drag these to whatever order you want. Modules I would also keep, that's important. Uh, so pages and files I would hide. And I'll explain why why this is important in just one second. Outcomes and quizzes, I'm hiding. Conferences, collaborations. Attendance is a built-in attendance tool that we'll, I'll, I'll show you in the last video. But if you're teaching a face-to-face -face class, you may want to check that out. But I'll disable that for now. The chat tool. There's the Respondus Lockdown Browser. My media is uh, for the Kaltura video server. It's sort of like our own private YouTube. If you're not using that, you can disable that. Um, and I would keep the student feedback on instruction. That's what we use for end of course surveys. Lastly, check down on this disabled section to see if there's anything you want to enable. If you're using McGraw-Hill or Pearson MyLab or, or so on, you may want to drag these up to enable them. 
Also, if you're using any library resources, you may be able to enable that as well. But however you want to change the, the uh, course navigation menu, uh, feel free to do that. And then, But make sure at the very bottom that you click Save, otherwise it will forget all your changes. Okay, now you see some items are still visible, but they're grayed out. That means that students can't see them. Again, if I go to Student View, I'll be able to see. See, now only the things I wanted enabled are showing. So before we uh, get to the next video, I just want to say uh, make sure you try to do all the things that I just showed in this video. Again, otherwise you'll forget most everything that you just watched. But uh, again, I hope you have fun playing around with Canvas. In this next video, we're going to finally get started on building your course materials and organizing your content.